Tell me if this sounds familiar. Your team is frustrated with the communications department because it feels like the communications department is picking favorites of who gets promotion and how much promotion and where that promotion goes. And then your communications team is frustrated with the other departments because it feels like they have to be the bad guy, play gatekeeper, budgets, timelines are unrealistic and unclear. And there's a bit of a conflict, okay? It doesn't have to be this way. In this WordMate Digital tutorial, we're gonna be talking about how to have better team relations between communications and the rest of the teams on your team. Let's go. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Word Made Digital Tutorials. I'm Joanna LaFleur, and this is a series of tutorials where we're trying to equip you as a church, as a Christian charity, in how to do communications better in the digital age. Now, maybe 10 years ago, you didn't even have a communications department, but since then, you've got some person or people or volunteers doing communication, helping think through that for your organization, but the reality is it can get complicated. There can be conflict between the communications team and other departments. So in this video, we wanna break down some of where that comes from, how that feels from both sides, and then how you as a leader can help work to make that better in 2023. So thank you so much to the Canadian Center for Christian Charities who's making this tutorial and a bunch of our other tutorials possible. We love partnering with them because while you're focusing on your mission and your ministry, they can help you with some of the methods. And we're gonna talk more about them later, but membership to them is an amazing way to add some of the methods and systems you may need on your team as you focus on your ministry. Let's talk about some things that the communications person or department is not. Communications, number one, is not the bouncer. That is, often the communications person or team feels like they are the bouncer at the door, the security guard being forced to stand there saying who gets in, who gets out, and they're put in this position because of lack of clarity. And so often they can be felt like they're the one who, if you have a good relationship with them or it's perceived as maybe even favoritism, or you have more clarity in what you bring to them, then you're gonna get content and resources that other people don't. Communications cannot and should not be the bouncer, the security guard, the police officer in your organization determining who gets resource. On the other hand, number two, communications is not an unlimited bank account. This is where the conflict can come from because it can feel like the communications team is forced to say yes to everything that comes. If they're not acting like the bouncer, the security guard blocking the door saying no to what comes in and yes to what comes in. On the other hand, they can feel like they're being treated like an unlimited bank account where there's unlimited amounts of time, unlimited amounts of money, and unlimited amounts of resource from that person or that team to get your other teams' projects done. And so it can be a conflict where they feel like they can't say no, and so they get more and more bogged down. They might get more behind. They might not deliver on deadlines, and it can create more frustration because they either are seen as the bouncer or <laughs> the bank account, and neither of which is a good position to put your communications department in. So how should we view communications, the team, the person, the department, if it's not like the bouncer and it's not like the unlimited bank account? Well, I want you to think in one way about communications like an ad agency, not an administrator on your team. If you've ever watched a show like Mad Men or you have a concept of what an ad agency looks like, this is a hire that you do outside of your company, outside of your organization to get the expertise of people who know creative and communications and media and how to reach an audience with your message. And they would be hired with a plan to essentially get your message out to the world. And so if you wanna look at communications like an ad agency, not an administrator, not just a task doer, a get things done, that is an unlimited account where you can just ask more and more and more. If you think of them like a creative agency, it can look like this. The communications team provides a service and a skill set to other departments who don't have skills in marketing, advertising, digital media, and communications. And so the other department will come to communications and set up a meeting with a project or a, a product, an idea that they need to promote out into the world, out into your community. And so 
there's a meeting between the communications and between your other department. They get together in a room and when they get a clear idea of what the boundaries are around it, how much the budgets are, how much time it is going to take, what is the deadline for all these things? What are the big goals and the strategic ideas that this is going to get across? When everyone in the room can understand and agree to how this fits strategically, not just into the whole organization, but even just into this moments project, well, then we can move ahead. Communications will then go away and create a project pitch. This is what an ad agency would do. They would come back to the client and come up with a few ideas of how they think creatively it could be presented into the world. So they might have a few different concepts for what Christmas could look like this year from a design theme, branding perspective, or maybe they have a few ways and a few ideas based on budget timeline and structure and strategy how to get that idea out into the world. Then they meet again for the second time and the department and communications get together and decide which one is going to work. When everyone is agreed, everyone's signed off on it, it's off to the races. The communications department then is acting like the creative agency who's there to support and work with you, not as an administrator, to just get everything done at the time that you need it. They're really a creative member and collaborator on the team. So with that in mind, the communications team or person is a collaborator that is a partner on the project but they are not a senior leader. This is where it can get into that feeling like the communications team is the bouncer or the security guard at the door where they always feel like they have to say yes or no to who gets in. The communications team is a partner of equal power in the decision making. They're not the senior leader with authority to say yes, no to bigger strategic goals. That's because those have already been set by the senior leadership, by the senior pastor, the director, the executive team, the senior team, whoever that is has decided that and communications is operating just like all the other departments should be operating under those assumptions. So under a strategic plan decided on by leadership, each department has a certain amount of resources, time, money, et cetera, that they can use. And some of that can be spent at that creative ad agency, partnering with the communications department to make something come to life that's strategically aligned with the greater vision that you're trying to get at as an organization. So everyone knows that this is a strategic initiative and we're going to partner together. It's an easy yes. And we have a limit. There is some boundaries around how much time and how much money we can spend on this particular project. Now, when something comes up along the way that wasn't planned for, or something comes up that might be a bigger idea than we have budget for, that's when we have to say, okay, pause, time out, because communications is a partner here, not the senior leader in this case. And we need to go to senior leadership together to understand where are our priorities. If we have run up against a budgeting timeline or we just don't have enough capacity to do all these things right now, it's senior leadership who has to help us understand as a whole group, all departments together, which things to prioritize, where the money's gonna come from, essentially what to start doing, stop doing, and continue doing. This way, the communications department isn't put in a place where they're seen as playing favorites. It's all based on the strategy that's decided on by the senior leadership. And they're also not seen as an unlimited bank account where they just have endless amounts of time. They must keep saying yes, even though they don't have any capacity. And now they're working crazy overtime hours in these unseen corners of the building where they're doing all this extra work. It doesn't have to be that way because it can be escalated to senior leadership to understand what the strategic priorities have to be based on limited amounts of time, budget, money, creative, etc. I hope if you can see the creative and communications department as like a creative agency, not administrator, and as a partner, but not the senior leader dictating the project, it allows everyone to work together well. It gets rid of some of the politics. It gets rid of some feelings of favoritism. And it helps, most importantly, I would say from the communications perspective, it helps departments understand the real cost of what they are asking the communications team to do. When the communications team keeps performing and delivering at a high level, getting all this stuff out week to week, month to month, year to year, it's hard sometimes for other departments to understand the real cost. And so if you can be treating it like an ad agency where there's a limited budget and a set amount of time given for it, then it allows everyone to understand the true costs, time, money, people, and so on that are going into the projects to make it happen for your ministry, to make it happen for your whole organization to see such a successful year and a strategic year focused on what you said you wanted to accomplish. 
Well, thank you so much for checking this out. And thank you so much to the Canadian Center for Christian Charities. As I said, they're focusing on helping their members do ministry and mission, and they can take care of some of the methods. So there's lots of things you might be unfamiliar with in charity world. Maybe you're new to the charity world and the charity space, or maybe you need a refresher. They have some amazing free workshops on their website. If you go to cccc.org slash free. There's an amazing amount of resources there. Like there's one resource, for example, if you want to check it out, there's a free web webinar all about how to understand what's required for a ministry to be in good charitable status in Canada. You may not even think about that most of the time. You're not thinking about taxation and the CRA, the Canadian Revenue Agency, and maybe you're, you're not thinking about all these HR issues until they come up. And that's where the Four C's is an amazing partner for their members. So I want you to check it out at cccc.org slash free. Amazing resources. The link will be down in the show notes. Thank you so much to them. And thanks for checking out this whole tutorial series. Hope it helps you. Share it with a friend, hit subscribe so you don't miss another one.